Hey everybody, these next set of videos are going to be productivity tools to help you out in Dorico. So if you're struggling to get things done in a timely manner, these are for you. They're quick tips and ways of getting through Dorico because Dorico has a bunch of really great intuitive tools to help you note entry, dynamics, chord symbols, and all of these things that can be done so much quicker when you learn kind of the methodology and some of these uh, easy to work with ideas. Keep checking back for more of these videos as I'll be adding more and more of these because I want to keep them fairly short so that if you're having trouble, you'll be able to pull one up and learn two or three quick things that will help you out and get you moving faster when you're entering notes and creating music in Dorico. So here we go. So to begin with, we have a score here for a saxophone quartet I wrote called The Lucky You. And so what we're going to be doing is using this as a way of helping us understand some of the quick tools that we can use to make Dorico much, much more efficient when we're doing things like note entry, dynamics, articulations, and other things. Let's start with the note entry tool. Now, most of you have probably figured out how to enter notes basically into the computer, but there's a couple of different ways, and there's a couple of little tricks I want to show you about the note entry entry tool. The first thing here is in Dorico, there's a couple of different ways to get into the note entry tool. The first one is you can highlight a measure or a note and you can hit shift N to get into the tool. Now you can also hit just the enter key and that'll take you in. You can also double click and all of those will get you in. So depending on where your hand is on the keyboard versus the mouse, you have a lot of different options on how you can get into this tool, which is really kind of handy when you think about it, because if you're like me and you spend a lot of time with one hand on the, the keyboard and the other hand on the musical keyboard, this gives us the option to get to these tools much, much quicker. The second thing I wanna talk about is the different entry modes. So in Dorico, we have a couple of different ways that we can enter notes into a part. The first one, and this is the way that I think most notation software assume we're gonna do it, which is using the MIDI keyboard. So by default, if you have your MIDI keyboard turned on, set up, and operating with your computer, if you select a note value over here from the menu, um, or by using the corresponding hotkeys. So number six is a quarter note. So anything bigger than six is going to be a larger note value, AKA a half note is seven, a whole note is eight, and anything smaller than six, say five, which is an eighth note, or four, which is a 16th note, is gonna give you those note values. So I'm gonna choose a half note to begin with. So I'm gonna hit seven on the keyboard, and then I'm just going to press down one or more keys on the keyboard. And you can see, there you go. It just went ahead and entered in the notes that I pressed on the keyboard. Now, obviously, these pitches are way too high for a soprano saxophone, but it worked pretty well. Now, this brings us to one of the other cool tools in Dorico, which is the backspace or delete function. And this is a little bit easier to work with than it was in, say, Finale, because no matter where the playhead is, or the carrot, as they call it, for entering notes, if you hit backspace, it will delete the previous note that is to the left of the carrot. So if I'm on beat one of this bar five here and I hit backspace, it'll go all the way back and delete that um, half note. But if I take that back and I go just right before the note I wanna hit delete, Again, it'll still just delete that note. And this is really handy if, say, I wanted to enter in a series of eighth notes. And let's say I want to delete just one of them. I can put the playhead right before the one I want to delete, in this case that D, hit backspace, and not only will it delete it, but it'll leave behind a rest. So if you realized you entered too many notes when you were plugging in a run, you can go back and you can delete just the offending note and it'll leave behind a rest, which is actually kind of a time saver. I find that a lot where um, I think to myself, oops, I really didn't want that note and so I can hit boom and it leaves behind a rest, which is at the end of the day, the kind of rhythm I was looking for in my piece. 
Now, the other two methods for entering notes into Dorico work basically the same way as the MIDI keyboard, but now we're gonna use the, the typing keyboard on our computer or the mouse pointer. So again, if I get into the note entry tool, I can use the mouse pointer to enter notes by simply, again, choosing the note value I want and making sure that this little pointer tool up here is not selected. If that one is turned on as it is right now, you'll see that no matter where I click, it's not entering notes because what that tool does is it disables mouse entry so that you could quickly highlight a note while in the note entry tool and make a change to a pre-existing note, say adding an articulation or changing its length. But if you want to enter notes using the mouse, you need to uncheck that feature. Now you'll see there's a small gray playhead wherever my mouse pointer is and I can enter notes. Now be aware in Dorico, your mouse pointer when using this note entry uh, tool is going to auto snap to the grid that we have assigned for our note entry tool. So right now you can see down here in the bottom left hand corner, so you can see here the grid is broken up into eighth notes. So in 4-4 there would be eight divisions because there is two eighth notes per, per quarter note. And so when using the note entry tool like this, I can't enter anything off of a beat that isn't an eighth note, meaning I can't put in a 16th note syncopation without actually using the mouse and keyboard um, to move the playhead over. So right now I am limited to just entering eighth notes, but wherever that um, playhead, that little ghost note is, that's where it's gonna enter the note value I enter, which is also kind of nice because this means with the mouse entry tool, if I want a half note on beat three, I can choose half note, I can go over to where the beat three is, and I can just enter it. If you remember in Finale, if you clicked on the right side of an empty measure, it would put the note in all the way at the beginning. And the reason that this is kind of cool is it actually negates the need to enter rests before notes. You can just put the note where you want and Dorico will fill in the rests that preceded the note that you entered on beat three. So if I go down here to the alto part and I put in that half note on beat two, or on beat three, excuse me, Look at that, it just put in the half rest for me. So this is really cool, especially if you're doing something complex like a percussion part and you wanna use the mouse pointer to try and be just a little more precise because this way we don't have to worry about entering in rests and notes, we only have to do notes. Finally, we can also use the keyboard to enter it. And this is simply a matter of choosing the note value you want, and then you're gonna go in and you're gonna hit the corresponding letter for the note you're interested in. So if I want an A, I would hit the A key. B, C, D, E, F, G, and there's my A for a one octave scale. So this is really handy sometimes when I'm on an airplane or I'm sitting in a waiting room for a meeting or something, I can do some uh, light work on Dorico and it's actually relatively efficient. You have to remember in all of these options though, in Dorico, you're gonna choose the rhythmic value first, then you're going to choose which pitch you wanna enter via the keyboard, via the mouse, or via the typing keyboard. Now there is one bonus note entry tool, which is in some ways handy, but I don't think it's the fastest way to enter, which is if you hit the up arrow down here on the bottom of your screen, and you can see there's a little piano keyboard icon. If I click on this, it will allow me to enter notes into a measure by simply touching the key on this virtual MIDI keyboard. And one of the nice things about this tool is if I'm sort of unsure about which octave I wanna be in or anything, I can go to this and I can click on the note and you can see, voila, it'll enter the pitches as if I'm typing on a, a real MIDI keyboard. I will say that sometimes it's gonna enter in some interesting uh, accidental choices, but Dorico has a feature where it'll, where it'll automatically go back and try and correct its uh, spellings of accidentals. So don't give up on it as you're entering. Sometimes it'll enter in some funny stuff like this and you think to yourself, oh my goodness. But as you continue in the measure, it'll probably correct it to what you're looking for. Now, going along with these different note 
entry ID is, there's a couple of options we can choose over on the left that are really handy. Let's say you're working in a setting where you don't have access to a real MIDI keyboard, but you need to enter chords into the notation. Well, over here on the left, this little stack of three notes, that is the chords entry tool. And if I click on that, now when I enter the note on the MIDI keyboard, you'll see it doesn't advance the carrot, and it allows me to enter multiple notes all in the same beat in the same place, in essence, making chords. And so again, if I'm sitting in a place where I have no access to a MIDI keyboard and I need to enter a piano part, for example, this is a way of being able to enter multiple notes. Along this same idea, let's say I want to change the notes that I pre-entered, but I want to preserve the rhythm and the articulations. And that's what this little lock tool is here, which, which is the hotkey L when you're in the note entry tool. This is great because now when I start entering pitches, it's going to preserve the rhythm I had and it's going to change the note values. And so I can really quickly edit a part. Say I copied the first trumpet part down into the second part and then I can enter in the harmony notes without affecting any of the articulations, dynamics, or the rhythms, which is a really, really big time saver. I do this an awful lot throughout my uh, use of Dorico, and this is a huge, huge time saver. The last couple of things I want to show you in the note entry tool have to do with working with a multiple instrument score, say this saxophone quartet. Let's say I have a MIDI keyboard at my disposal, and let's say that I wanted to enter chords into the whole section. So in previous programs, when I wanted to enter in chords into multiple staves, what I would do is I would select the spot in the topmost stave, and I would enter in the chord that I was looking for in all my parts. And then from there, I would have to copy that note, highlight all of the different measures where I want the parts to be, and then I would have to go in, and in Dorico, it's under Paste Special, where we explode, and see it breaks the triad that I put in in the top part out. But Dorico has a much quicker and more efficient way of doing this. If I go back to this measure, and I turn on the Note tool, and I hold down Shift, and I hit the down arrow, you'll see that my carrot expands all the way down through the three staves that I selected. And now if I play that triad, you can see that it automatically entered all of the notes, but it put it from top down into the different staves. So if I'm programming, say, a solely part, if I can one note at a time play it into the MIDI keyboard, all of a sudden now it is entering them directly into the staves where they belong, and I don't have to do any kind of exploding or anything like that. I can also use this tool with the lock feature, and I can change all of the pitches but preserve the rhythms. Now, a note on this feature is, it is very literal when you're using the MIDI keyboard. And what do I mean by that? So you can see that my tenor sax part is way too high because I was playing a one-handed triad pretty high on the MIDI keyboard. It will, however, observe if I was to use both hands on the keyboard and spread the chord out, it will go again one note at a time from top to bottom and it'll preserve the octaves. And look at that. It entered all the notes right where they belong, and it preserved all of the octaves, and it made it exactly what I was entering on the MIDI keyboard. And so when I'm entering this, I like to put it into concert pitch mode so that I can play the concert pitch chord, and so then Dorico will automatically transpose those notes per whichever instrument I'm looking at, and it saves me a whole bunch of time. And this is how I create big band charts and voicings, is I'll turn on this feature, I'll go the whole trumpet section, and then I'll play with one hand that four note trumpet chord, and it'll enter all the notes simultaneously, which is such a huge time save. 
Well, I hope you found some of these tips useful. Again, check back on the channel. I'm going to have lots more of these short tip videos. And make sure you like and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. We, I've been having a lot of great feedback on these uh, Dorico videos. So make sure you leave your questions and comments down on the bottom. I'm always looking to try and make things a little bit better for everyone. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.